Uh, hi, uh, hello, and welcome to create beautiful balanced learning content with the Components for Learning plugin. Um, my name is Roger Sabu. I work, I'm from Barcelona and I work as a, a user experience designer and front-end developer. I specialize in learning environments, uh, meaning I, I create uh, courses, themes, and plugins uh, mainly for learning institutions and mainly with Moodle. Um, sorry, was here. Um, also, uh, I'm an instructional designer. I've always been. Um, I was an instructional designer way before I learned to code. So uh, I know how it feels to have a precise idea for a course and not being able to implement it because you don't have the tools. I've experienced that pain myself. And uh, that was the reason uh, for me to start learning uh, development in the first place. And so I did it. I, I learned um, HTML, then CSS, then <laughs> JavaScript, then PHP, and it's been, uh, it's been, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's, uh, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. And it's been, it's been, uh, it's been quite a, quite a 10 year period. And now I finally can safely build my own uh, Moodle themes and plugins. So, um, when I did not have those skills, I always wished uh, that there was some solution that would help uh, instructional developers to quickly apply meaningful and balanced uh, design content to their materials uh, with, uh, with ease and simplicity. So now that I can code, I just build it. <laughs> and I called it uh, Components for Learning. So, what is Components for Learning? Well, uh, it's a free plugin, specially designed for Moodle, that allows you to use a collection of visual components directly in the Atto editor. What you see here in this image uh, is uh, the model window that shows after clicking on the, uh, the plugin button in the Atto editor. And well, for, for those uh, at the end of the, of the room, I'll take a moment to read them aloud. Those are the key concepts, the tip, the reminder, attention, quote, do and don't cards, uh, reading context, example, figure, tag, estimated time, due date, procedural context, grading value, expected feedback, all-purpose card, and inline tag. So as you can see, uh, all the available components are aimed to meet the educator's needs. We'll see more about them later on. Just tell you that you can find the plugin, uh, obviously for free, uh, in the Moodle plugin, uh, plugins directory, and uh, download it and install it through the site's administration. And uh, as you can see, uh, it supports uh, all the latest Moodle versions. And once installed, you can start using it. No further settings needed. Just simple as that. OK, but let's see in action. Uh, let's imagine we are working on this material for our learners. We are in the Atto editor here. And let's see we want uh, to give them a tip and we want it to visually differentiate from the regular text. Uh, all we need to do is select the piece of text we want to turn into a tip, this area here, and cut it like that. OK, then um, we click on the Components for Learning button. We choose the tip component. And we replace the placeholder text with the text we just cut. 
Okay, so um, when we save, um, when we save, uh, this is how it displays. Okay, and well, as easy as that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. That was unexpected. Okay, then let's see another example. In this case, um, let's imagine we want to add a quote to, to reinforce a, a particular idea. And for instance, uh, let's take a fragment from On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin uh, on, the, on the Gutenberg project in this case. And all we need to do is um, choose and select the original quote and copy it. And then, then again, we click on the components for learning button. We choose the quote, the quote component. And well, we got this uh, placeholder text again. We just replaced it with the text we, we copied. And finally, in this case, uh, we have to add the author's name and the title of the work, and that's all. So, and then, like, just like before, when we save, we, we have this format uh, already applied. Okay, um, our goal here, sorry, our goal here is to provide our learners with a cohesive design for every type of content. Uh, the main principle is simple and connects with the fundamentals of design. We always use the same visual components for the same type of content. That way, students will effortlessly learn to identify them and assign every type of content with a single meaning, always the same. And in no time, this meaning will become unconscious for them. The same way uh, we'll know a small X cross at the top right of the corner of a window means closing it, closing the window, or the three lines in a row uh, mean display the menu, and all these kind of patterns. And this is how we help reduce the learner's cognitive load which is one of the main goals of uh, every instructional designer, as, as you all know. And, okay, uh, in the previous cases, I show you um, two examples of contextual components. Contextual components um, helps us assign the meaning to a particular content regarding its context in relation to the main flow. Uh, something exemplifies an idea, or something summarizes an idea, something highlights an idea, this, this kind of stuff. Okay, and they are, uh, those are usually the, the most common and the most relevant in the learning uh, process. process. Okay, but there are also two other types of components. Um, I called them procedural components, and also evaluative components. Uh, procedural components are specifically intended to give students input on the learning process they are involved in. For instance, let's imagine we want to specify the estimated time a learner can expect to invest in a particular activity. Yeah, we could place it here in the rectangle. And again, well, uh, as before, all we need to do is click the button, choose the corresponding component, and uh, we replace the content uh, of the placeholder text, and that's it. We save it, and we see it like that. Okay, and finally, um, finally, let's take a look at 
the evaluative components, <coughs> which I just mentioned a minute ago, uh, evaluative components are intended to inform the learners about any aspect regarding grading feedback from the teacher or other related uh, considerations uh, linked to evaluation. Okay, in this case, yeah, I'm not going to explain again because it's always the same, just uh, copy, click the button, select the component, okay? But just for you to, to see how it works, imagine in this case, we want to provide an expected feedback and we again select the text and do all, all the thing. Okay, here we select the corresponding component and, well, here we are. This one would be the expected feedback component. So, this is how we see it. Okay, um, at this point of the presentation, it would be relevant to introduce you to the project's site. Uh, it took me a long time to get it ready, uh, but final, I finally got it published last week, just in time. And uh, on the site, you will find a detailed description of the project, along with uh, its main goals and characteristics in general. And as you will see there, uh, Components for Learning is an open learning project, meaning that is free and that is available for everyone. The plugin itself is licensed GPL as the rest of the Moodle core software. And all the contents on the site are freely available under, under uh, Creative Commons license. <coughs> also, on the site, uh, you can find a guide that uh, will help you browse uh, through all available components and choose the most suited for every situation. Let's see an example, a quick, a quick example, and I'll finish. Um, let's say we wanted to use the key concept in, in a material. Okay, but however, uh, we may not be entirely sure that this is the component we really need for that particular case. Uh, so we go and visit the guide, and this is what we find. And as you can see, uh, in this case, our assumption was correct, as uh, highlighting an idea is in fact the purpose of the key component concept, uh, sorry, the key concept component. And uh, we also uh, see there uh, a demo just before, uh, on how it will display once applied. Um, most components uh, may have slightly different purposes, so uh, this, this uh, is important, and I guess the guide will have you covered in, in all this matter. Also, another interesting feature in the guide is the provision of uh, recommended and discouraged uh, use cases for you um, um, for most of the components. And, and I must say uh, it's uh, really interesting because those are based in uh, real user testing, uh, mostly by teachers at uh, Instituto Verde Catalunya, uh, who have committed to, to this, thank you, <laughs> thank you very much, <laughs> who have committed to this project and are using a very similar extended collection of those components. Uh, so those recommendations were added after detecting some confusing use patterns uh, to help avoid uh, confusions that, that raise naturally. And also there, uh, there is a, a final aspect in the guide that I, I find particularly useful, which are uh, real life examples for every component. Uh, as you can see here, you can find them at the bottom of the page uh, you just need to click uh, to uh, each one to open them in a model window, like that, and you see that particular piece of example, so it can help you uh, disambiguate uh, and proceed. And that's it. Uh, well, um, finally, um, just let you know that this project has just started, and I'm very, very interested 
in your input as educators. Um, I'd love to know what components you miss and what kind, um, and I mean, uh, any kind of, of involvement uh, would be more than appreciated. Uh, because this is a living project, you know, it's just a start now. And if you wish to get involved in the project in any way, um, you will find my contact uh, in the site. It's um, Roger at um, componentsforlearning.org. And if uh, you install the plugin, uh, I encourage you to follow the Twitter account at com for learning um, to get updates on new components available or tutorials, and also to get in contact and, and make suggestions. Also, again, I would uh, like to thank uh, all the teachers at YO uh, who helped me during uh, the last years, and without them, that would have would have happened been possible. And also I would like to especially thank uh, to Justin Hunt, um, which uh, plugin snip, Poodle Snippet was, uh, was used uh, uh, in this case to, 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 make, to, to make the, the base code for this, uh, this plugin. So this is also me, my professional site and my Twitter account. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Thank you, Roger. What a great plugin. I think we all enjoyed looking at that. We have questions. Hi. Hi. Just a couple of questions. Um, question on uh, a suggestion. Uh, the question, uh, the, uh, the styles, the colors, and the, uh, does, uh, uh, are they visible on the mobile application? Or the, uh, Moodle, in the mobile? The, no. the, Moodle, uh, the Moodle app. In the Moodle. Yeah. Uh, Moodle has a mobile application. Yes, no, it's not. No, because uh, this is, um, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. This is, uh, this is made, um, over the Atto editor, uh -huh. meaning that it's uh, all HTML and CSS and a bit of JavaScript. And the mobile app works uh, entirely different. So, yeah, I'm afraid uh, this, uh, I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm not an expert at this matter, but maybe no, that, neither that, I. <laughs> okay. maybe, maybe that would be a, a custom integration that you may uh, need to ask to the providers, the, the Moodle app providers. But no, this, sorry, this is uh, what it has is um, all the styles are also um, usable. It's, it, I mean, it's responsive. It's completely re responsive. If you use Moodle in a, in a mobile, it will display correctly. OK. But uh, not the, the app, just, the, the, just in the browser. In the browser, OK. Yeah. Uh, the suggestion, have you, maybe you have some input from uh, your teachers on, on, on the Institute. Uh, having a, the other way around, uh, I mean, click on the button, you get a, a panel to yeah. put the content, and then when you uh, uh, you have a button, uh, an, an enter button, and, and you get the content on the yeah. text with, the, uh, I mean, uh, avoiding to have a, a lot of ellipsum and replace. Yeah, skipping, skipping the placeholder text. Yeah, I guess I tried it, I must confess, but I, I mean, that would uh, require another uh, level of development skills, okay. which I, <laughs> I don't have, uh, because uh, m most of these of these uh, kind of features uh, needs to be embedded in the tool itself. In this case, it's Atto, and I'm not sure it's that easy. It would require further custom development, also. Bye. Okay, we have another question, I think, here somewhere. No? Congratulations, Roger. Thank you. Uh, in my case, I've been 
doing all my own CSS style sometimes for some activities, but never a plugin. And the only question maybe is for people from university, have you give to them the patterns of the of the tools you are using so in their own presentations, not in Moodle, they use the same styles? Do you know that? Well, um, yeah. Uh, so, well, it's a bit more complicated, but in some way, yes, because uh, there was a design system prior to the implementation of the plugin, and uh, you could take the design system and use it uh, in any context you, you like, but uh, it's not done or not already done or it has not been needed to, to do until now. So um, it's done, but it's not implemented. Okay, thank you. Hi, thanks, Roger. That looks really useful. Um, thank you. So when you're adding templates, I presume it, it's adding CSS and HTML. And is there any way that that's protected? Because we're using templates in the past. I've found that people can easily delete like a bracket or something and yeah. it completely messes things up and they don't know how to fix it. Is there any sort of protection around the CSS and HTML or can it just be deleted? Well, um, yeah, uh, kind of. Because, uh, yeah, uh, the last version I did, well, the published uh, official version, what I did is um, use, uh, when, when you, uh, if, if you look at the CSS that lies behind it, uh, you will see that there are uh, some, there, every component is preceded and, and there's also after, after it a paragraph with a special class that makes it uh, difficult for the user to get messed with the process. I mean, when you uh, press enter, there uh, a new paragraph appears. So I kind of hacked the way to solve this matter and used this, uh, I mean, well, it's, it's a very simple and not high-tech solution, but uh, it's proven useful. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, there was a question, yes, up here. Thank you. Hi, and thanks for the presentation. Thank the you. plugin is very interesting. Uh, I want to know, uh, you say that it works with Atto, but I have a lot of uh, users that use TinyMCA also. And uh, I think, uh, I don't know if you try to also add uh, the button for the TinyMCA editor or not, uh, uh, if you think to do in the next future or, or not. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I, I guess uh, uh, it will be mandatory, kind of mandatory. Uh, so I, I, will, I will make the changes. Uh, to adapt it also to to um, tiny MC uh, because um, well I, I I don't know uh, how it will work but I will try to um, to make it uh, the most similar possible and if I understood correctly I think um, 4.1 version will uh, still have Atto included, but I guess 4.2 um, closes Atto, and so it it will it will I will I will have to attend these changes, and and I I expect very soon that will be done. Thanks. Are there yes another question over here? Sorry. Thank you very much for the talk. It looks Thank really you. nice. Um, one question I had um, as a student, if I see these components, is there any possibility for like contextual information or tool tips to see what that means so I can get to learn it, what it means? Or are there plans to implement, like if you hover over the icons to see this should be a quote or something? Uh, uh, I recommend you to start with the guide. Mm -hmm. You know, in the in the site of the project, you will find the the guide, and and it includes a detailed explanation of, of every case, mm -hmm. and also I I am planning to release uh, as soon as I can 
a series of video tutorials explaining each of them briefly to avoid users have to, to mingle with all the technicities. But I don't know, again, how it will be possible to get done. OK, thank you. Thank you. Yes, hello. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. Um, do you work with Bootstrap, or are you planning to work with Bootstrap, and do you add more elements from it? Sorry, Bootstrap or the second part? Uh, do you want to add more elements from the Bootstrap uh, framework? Uh, yeah, that's interesting, because uh, I've already done it, and thanks to this, this man here, <laughs> David. Uh, yeah, because the situation when I started uh, doing these components was that the, um, the, the YOG, the Institut Verde Catalunya, already um, was working with Bootstrap. So I added some components, which what I did uh, was a bridge between Bootstrap and, and this, uh, this more simple uh, version. And uh, what we did was applying the design system to I mean, uh, all the tabs, uh, tables, all this kind of, uh, of more bootstrappy things. And, and I think it was quite, it worked well. And um, obviously, uh, all this will work over bootstrap because it's made uh, to work on, on, on Moodle 3.3 uh, dot uh, whatever, and it will be no problem with that. Thanks, and we have a question here from Martin. Just a very quick one, another congratulations, it's, it's really nice. Thank you very um, much. Do, on your website, do you have uh, an example of an entire course that you've built where we can see your entire vision all together with everything applied? Okay, I'm also uh, working in it. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll try to do that. Um, it's a shame that I, I, I don't have time to, to um, to browse the, the well um, more thoroughly. But there you, you when, when I was uh, talking about real life examples, um, that's what I meant, because all, all, them, all of them are, are like fragments that you may, may as well have taken from a course. And, and it's a bit like a start um, um, on this kind of, of, uh, of, of road you suggest. But I hope I will have also have the time, and, and that would be that would be the, the best the best solution for everyone to easily um, boarding and, and starting to use it. 